morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. Well, what an incredible time we're going through at the moment. It is so difficult um, and a lot of us are stuck inside and not allowed to travel, which is difficult for being a landscape photographer, but the most important thing is obviously to stay safe and protect others as well. But I thought it'd be really a good idea because I've got more time on my hands now. Obviously, I'm not traveling, I'm not running workshops, um, to be able to put out more videos, to be able to do videos that I, I've, I've wanted to do for a while, but I've not had time because I've done my Sunday videos, which tend to be a little bit longer. So these are gonna be some videos that are really short, um, probably for around about five minutes long, and are gonna be things that you can do whilst you're inside. So they're gonna concentrate on things like Lightroom, Photoshop, um, printing, you know, cataloging your images, um, cleaning your gear, anything that you can do whilst you're inside. Now, I'm gonna need a name for them as well. So when you've watched it, you can maybe write in the comments um, an idea for a name. But this one today, this, this video is all about the radial filter and five things that you can do with the radial filter. So the, f the first one with the radial filter, and if you don't know, the radial filter's up here and it allows you to select a part of your image. So the first image I'm gonna to go to is this image here, which was from Norway. You know, it's a fantastic image. I've done some very, very basic editing on it, but I want to sort of highlight this area here. So this first one is using the radial filter to actually create a, almost like a, 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 not a fake sun, but like a bright area and, and sort of, just make it a little bit softer. And it's really good if the sun's just over off to the left of your image and you just want to sort of highlight that. I am just going to draw that filter in there, um, invert it. You can press O on your keyboard just to see where, what it's affecting. So it's just gonna affect that. I'm gonna increase the exposure. But the key thing is with this is I'm gonna reduce the clarity. So I'm gonna reduce the clarity right down. I'm gonna add it a little bit warmer and I'm probably gonna increase the whites a little bit and probably reduce the highlights. So that you can see that, you know, that's made this nice sort of look to this, this area here. And then you can move that around, I can extend it. And it's just a really good way of, of just sort of softening that sort of soft, that sun spot down and sort of broadening it out through your image. So you get like that sort of nice sort of filter effect through your image. Now, once you've done that, um, a quick top tip, this is one of the five, so it's an extra one, is that you can change it. So here, I can save it as, as an, an effect. So if I want to, I can save this current setting as um, Soft Sun 2. So if you want to get to that really quickly, you can go back and get to it. Really easy. Okay, the next one, we're going to this image, is just using the radial filter as a vignette. So here I've got the radial filter and I'm actually gonna go and do vignette medium. And then all I'm gonna do is just add that vignette. And the advantage of doing it with the radial filter is that I can have more control. So if I want to just, um, just going to darken it down a little bit more. So if I just want to affect the top part of the image a little bit more than the bottom part, I can do this, I can move it down a little bit and it gives you more control. So, um, you can do that in lots of different ways. So in this image here, if you look, so this, this one here, you can see that I've just darkened down the outside quite a bit um, by adding this vignette and it just brings attention to the actual tree in the middle. So it's super easy to do and it allows you more control of that vignette as well. So if I wanted to, I could add the outside um, brighter or I could desaturate the outside of it which is something that's a little bit more difficult to do with just a vignette tool at the bottom of Lightroom. The next thing is almost like an inverse vignette. So if I go onto this image here, I could add a vignette just to the middle here and say I just want to just add this a little bit brighter and add maybe a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna reduce the highlights, but what I'm gonna do, invert it. So it's just, if I click O again, you can see it's just affecting this middle part. I'm gonna add a slightly bigger feather on it and what I can do now is I could just increase the whites. Again, I'm gonna reduce the clarity a little bit um, and then maybe just increase the exposure and then I'm gonna move it over because I want it to affect the lighthouse a little bit more and then maybe just reduce the shadows. So you can see I've done something quite subtle there, but if you get rid of it, it's 
just added something a little bit nicer to the image. And you can use that in lots of different ways. I quite often use it in my woodland images. So here, for instance, I might just want to apply it to this area here and just add a lighter area here. So I'm just going to go and lighten up that area. And I'm just going to reduce the clarity again as well. So you can see that what I've done, if I just switch this on and off, is I've just added a light spot which draws your eye in and takes your eye into that woodland. It looks really, really good. So for the next one, an image from Norway in the summer. And actually what I want to do is just brighten up the sky, but just, just the sky and not the land. So I can use the, the vignette tool really easily here. So I can just select that. I can see that I'm just, um, if I invert it, got that, that sky area. But I've also got these mountains down here. So what I can now do is I can use a range mask and choose color. So I can go and choose this color here. And what that does is it just selects the actual sky. Now you can change the amount it does that with the amount slider here. So if I get rid of O there, I can then, in this particular case, I just want to increase the brightness a little bit maybe, and then add a bit more saturation and maybe make it a little bit warmer. What that's enabled me to do is just apply that to the sky and not the mountains or, or, the, or the clouds. Uh, and if I just switch that on and off, you can see that that's made quite a big difference. I use that all the time in lots of different things, whether I'm selecting blue sky or just maybe some flowers or some foliage on the floor, just to select that particular color. And the final one, which is a bit like that, but just using a luminosity mask. So looking at the luminosity is if I look at this image here, maybe I want to make um, me more of a silhouette. So what I can do is I can use the radial tool here and just select me. And then what I can do is I've just click O, I'm going to have to invert it. So it's just selecting me, but it's also selecting all the um, C in the background. So I can use a luminosity mask. And what I can do, I can just say, just affect the dark areas. And you can see that's now just going to affect me. Now, if I didn't want it to affect this rock at the bottom, then I can also edit the mask as well. So I can just brush and erase that bottom area. So I could just get rid of this here. So it's now just impacting me and, and nothing else. So now if I wanted to, I could make that more of a silhouette. Now you've got to be fairly subtle with this. You can see now I can just darken me down and it does a really good job of doing that and looking really good without going into Photoshop. And that's it. That's my quick five minute, hopefully five minutes tutorial um, using the radial mask in Lightroom and how it just makes such a big difference. It's such a powerful tool to your photos. I hope that's helped. Make sure you write in the comments ideas for titles for these five minute quick videos. Um, it will be really helpful and then I can title them something. I'll try and get one out every week in the midweek over the next sort of couple of months. And hopefully that'll help somebody get through the boredom whilst we're all stuck inside. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching. And until Sunday, bye.